classifications for completely edentulous patient. Completely edentulous patients exhibit a broad range of physical variations and health concerns. Classifying all edentulous patients as a single diagnostic group is insensitive to the multiple levels of physical variation and the differing treatment procedures required to restore function and comfort. Reasons for a classification system Establishing a basis for diagnostic and treatment procedures Justifying treatment procedures and fees to third-party buyers and patients Screening patients treated in dental faculties for assignment to undergraduate or graduate students Providing data for review of treatment outcome and simplifying communication in discussions of treatment with patients and collegials. The American College of Prosthodontists ACP has developed a classification system for complete edentulous edentulism that is based on specific diagnostic criteria. Edentulism is divided into four levels of difficulty or complexity from 1 to 4. Class 4 designate patients who require the most difficult degree of complexity of a treatment. Diagnostic criteria for classifying patients. The diagnostic criteria are ordered by their objectivity, that's to say, the easy with which they can be measured and assessed and not in their rank of significance. Objective criteria will allow for the most accurate applications of the classification system and measurement of its efficacy. Objectivity will also provide reliable outcome data and mechanism for review by administrative panels. Descending order of objectivity, mandibular bone height measured by radiographically and morphologic features of maxillary residual ridge, mandibular muscle attachment, maxillomandibular relationship, presence of conditions require pre-prosthetic surgery and inter-arch space and tank anatomy, and lastly, modifying variables such as systemic disease psychosocial factors or temporomandibular disorders. The case sheet for each case will be filled according to class 1, class 2, and the class 4 criteria. The diagnostic criteria include the bone height for the mandibular arch, the maxillomandibular relationship, the residual ridge morphology for the maxillary arch, and muscle attachments. Class 1 ideal or minimally compromised, class 2 moderately compromised, class 3 substantially compromised, and class 4 severely compromised. This is the diagnostic criteria as we said. We start with the bone height for the mandibular arm, the alveolar bone loss, chronic progressive irreversible and disabling process probably of multifactorial origin. At the present time, the importance of various cofactors is unknown. Quantity of the underlying bony foundation. The denture foundation area, tissue remaining for reconstruction, loss of facial muscle support and attachment, decrease in the total facial height and residual ridge morphology. Classification of alveolar atrophy, which include the measurement of incisal edge to the vestibule, the alveolar crest to the vestibule, the occlusal plane to the inferior border, mental nerve to the inferior border, and the alveolar crest to the inferior border with their range of degree of. The objectivity of residual bone height measurements is affected by the magnification and variance of radiographic procedures and equipment of different manufacturers. 
However, this diagnostic measurement reveals the most information of all the criteria in order to minimize variance in techniques the measurement should be made at that portion of the mandible of the least vertical height. The first type is type 1 residual bone height of 21 mm or greater measured at the least vertical height of the mandible. Type 2 the residual bone height of 16 to 20 mm measured at the least vertical height of the mandible. Type 3, residual alveolar bone height of 11 to 15 mm measured at the least vertical height of the mandible. Type 4, residual vertical bone height of 10 mm or less measured at the least vertical Functional positioning of the artificial teeth, the maxillomandibular relationship classification relates to the position of the artificial teeth to residual ridge and the opposing dentition. We can see the relation between the position of the teeth and bone in different classes. In a class one, this relation allows tooth position that has normal articulation with the teeth supported by the residual ridge. And we can see that the maxillary anterior teeth are arranged with their long excess and relation with the adjacent teeth. And we can use the anatomical teeth in class 1 ridge relationship while class 2 and 3 preferable to use a non-anatomical teeth. The anterior tooth arrangement will be differ in their overjet in class 1 from the class 2 and the class 3. In class 2, the maxillomandibular relationship requires tooth position outside the normal ridge relation in order to attain phonetics and articulation. That's to say, anterior or posterior tooth position not supported by the residual ridge. Anterior vertical overlap that exceed the principles of articulation. Magnitude of overjet, we can see that there, there is more for class 2 patient than from class 1 ridge relationship. And we can see here also in a class 2 relation, relationship. The method of arranging artificial teeth for a class 2 jaw relationship, we have problems in mechanical and aesthetic. We have a 12 anterior teeth set for aesthetic and occlusal vertical dimension rechecked by the closest speaking space technique and the space filler and an extra cuspid may be used. Modification of upper tooth block the upper arch is wider than the lower in this patient and therefore tooth colored wax is added to the buccal surface of the teeth and another method can used by adding a wax to the palatal surface of the upper teeth. The lower cast appears to be too far back in its relationship to the upper cast. The problem is both mechanical and aesthetic considerations. Articulate casts and position anterior 12 teeth to achieve proper aesthetics and phonetics. Occlusal plane best suited for the patient is selected and sometimes the experimental arrangement may provide for better centralization of masticatory force if placed considerably distal to the normal location. If the blocks are placed too far buccal to the teeth can be placed in their proper position and tooth colored wax can be added to the buccal to achieve a proper aesthetic result. The wax area are duplicated with acrylic resin to give a wide block of teeth that is both functional and aesthetic. The wax could also be added to the palatal surface but this would reduce tongue space. 
we can see here the arrangement of a closal class 2 relationship in class 3 maxillomandibular relationship require tooth position outside the normal regulation in order to attain phonetic and articulation that's to say cross bite anterior or posterior tooth position not supported by the residual ridge magnitude of horizontal overlap we can see in class 3 relationship the little or no overjet will be present and also we used an anatomical teeth in the posterior teeth for class 2 and the class 3 relationship in complete edentulism the arch and bone will be resolved from the upper and lower jaw and this will lead in different relation between the maxilla and the mandible and we can see there will be a smaller maxilla and a wider mandible position and angulation of the occlusal plane can be differed with the ridge resorption the center of stability will be different in a class 1 from class 2 and the 3 relation residual ridge morphology of the maxilla is the most objective criteria for the maxilla since measurements of the residual bone height by radiography is not reliable the following descriptive scenario follows a logical progression to describe the effect of residual ridge morphology and muscular influence on the maxillary denture type a of residual ridge morphology of the maxilla we can see the hard palate form the interior maxilla and the maxillary tuberosities here in type a the anterior labial and posterior buccal vestibular depth that resist vertical and horizontal movement of the denture base and a palatal morphology that resist vertical and horizontal movement of the denture base and sufficient tuberosity definition that resists the vertical and horizontal movement of the denture base and the hamular notch is well defined to establish the posterior extension of the denture base and there will be absence of tori or any exostosis while in type b of the maxilla there will be loss of posterior buccal vestibule tuberosity and hamular notch are poorly defined compromising delineation of the posterior extension of the denture base and the maxillary palatal and or lateral tori are rounded and do not affect the posterior extension of the denture base and palatal vault morphology that resists vertical and horizontal movement of the denture base in type c loss of anterior labial vestibule and the prominent midline suture maxillary palatal and or lateral tori with bony undercut that do not affect the posterior extension of the denture base and hyperplastic mobile anterior ridge that offers minimum support and stability of the denture base palatal vault morphology that offer minimal resistance to vertical and horizontal movement of the denture base and reduction of the post malar space by the coronoid process during mandibular opening and or exclusive movements in type d of the loss of anterior labial and posterior buccal vestibule the maxillary palatal and or lateral tori rounded or undercut that interfere with the posterior border of the denture and there will be a hyperplastic redundant anterior ridge and palatal bulk morphology that does not resist vertical or horizontal movement of the denture base and there will be prominent anterior nasal spine the location and influence of the muscle attachments affecting a complete denture are most commonly associated with the mandibular denture also the most significant measurements it is also the most difficult to quantify the following descriptive 
scenario follows a logical progression to describe the effect of muscular influence on the mandibular ridge and the anatomy that resists anterior or forward movement of the dentures, the muscle attachment. Type A of muscle attachments, adequate attached mucosal base without undue muscular impingement during normal function in all regions. Type B, adequate attached mucosal base in all regions except anterior buccal vestibule cuspid to cuspid, high mentalis muscle attachment. Type C, adequate attached mucosal base in all regions except anterior buccal and lingual vestibules, cuspid to cuspid area, and high genoglossus and mentalis muscle attachments. While in type D, adequate attached mucosal base only in the posterior lingual region and all other regions are detached. In type E, no attached to mucosa in any region and there will be cheek and lip movement equal to tongue movement. Thank you.